And Jake Winnerty. Who have been in a wonderful position ever since the start of this game. And we'll be saying that a lot through this set, I imagine. Quickly rotating into Monument, but now they've got to try and convert. They've got the Devo to do some big damage, but it's not going to quite connect. As with four squads remaining, the last man standing goes down for Reject Winnerty, and now we see KCP take the track. SWQ have been able to stay pretty healthy here, but Pioneers have been able to surround them now, get into a position where they can take so many good angles. This is going to be a real struggle for SWQ to get out of this one. Straight 3v3 shootout to see who is going to take home game number one in elimination bracket round one. Like you say, when you're looking at positional advantage, it certainly favors Pioneers here. However, are there any ult excels being popped here? You can see a couple. Well, you certainly can hear a couple being popped. Which may change how this fight starts to develop. Pioneers have complete control of zone. I was going to say, S SWQ really need a smoke or something to allow them to get out because the zone's going to be at their back soon and really going to force them into a position where they'll be uncomfortable. Grenades could come in. Utility is going to be massive here. If anyone has saved any, it could make the difference. There's an EMP going out. And it looks like SWQ are going to play off that. They got a little bit of damage and all of a sudden they are going to send it. Dona gets the nod. Jet goes down. Dona gets two. He wants to take out KCP himself. SWQ put the pieces together of a brilliant, brilliant end game push to take home your game. Utility, utility, utility. Off the EMP, into a grenade. And it just caught KCP off guard. They were rocked. Sadly for KCP, they didn't have that same kind of grenade presence because they'd used it all in previous fights. Extra Clown on 11 kills, Dreamfire on 12 kills. They can couple out. And you've got LG on seven kills. All three of these teams have been doing crazy damage. And now the fight. Across. This is such a good play. Is but it? no, now it looks ugly, it? and I don't think that was meant to happen. Pizza's gonna go down though. Put the castle wall to try and help his teammate out. Dreamfire have been so good up until this point. Now they're running into our heart hot Exo Clan though, and Dreamfire will fall as well. LG trying to move in to clean up these final kills. However, Exo Clan have been winning fight after fight at the moment, but it's looking like it maybe is going to be too much. LG will be your champions. As they keep their composure in those final moments. It's a second place for Exo, which makes the fans go wild. But for LG, that was a gift of a game. Here is the commotion that's happening over towards the cake build and the limpo are very low right now. SSE X-Ray are close. Pioneers are doing damage as well. Well, limpo did manage to at least get a full three back on their feet. And now they're having an influence on this game. And it's Pioneers who will fall. SSE X-Ray eliminated as well as six squads now find themselves involved in these final moments. And here comes Noxtrum. They are hungry for kills here. Reject Winnity will be eliminated as well. And when you're looking at KP and you're looking at potential points, the gentleman on your screen right now, if they can close this game out, then there's going to be a huge amount of points for them. Guild are the only other team that are still alive in this circle, by the way. Three squads, Noctum have just lost one. Go next, they're doing very well to defend this, but maybe Guild could benefit from all this fight that's happening. Noctum's going to be eliminated, and surely now this should just open the door to the respawn coming in. And MT manages to save the day, and now it's just about converting. Great shots, ripping the heads. Off of those players behind the castle wall, and now from the skies, from the dropship, Guild will be your champion as MT saves him with that respawn. I mean, you could see on the minimap that Guild were kind of just sat there, and it was because it was MT just trying to get them back into the map, and again, it's a gift of a game. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna don't pick, don't pick, don't pick, don't pick, just, just play time, they're gonna fight. They're retired. Look at the sim there behind us. Stay, stay, let them fight, fight, let them fight. They're fight. pushing our rights. They're pushing our right. They're pushing our right. They don't see anger. They are. They'll have angles on us. Yeah, but we have to move before them. No, we don't. We don't. Where's the turn? Pretty sure both uh, both of them have to fight. Turn, the turn. There's no safe spot. They have to fight. That's fences here. My hot. They should gen. Stay for me. Stay for me. Stay for me. Cut one. Almost brought the cat. I'm 
Cover the cover the I'm popping a bat. I'm baiting, I'm throwing nades. Play top uh, as much time as you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's time for Go Next to drop down. LG controls the wall. Slab falls Ooh. and right into Noctem. Somehow, Noctem have won the fight. Monson stays alive, but LG come in for the win. What a finish from LG. And I hate to say it, Tiff, but what a wall to do it. Moving on over and taking this win right out of the arms of Go Next. We had so many questions on what it was going to look like. Who would Noctem choose to rotate in? The round going to close, force these teams together momentarily. And look at North Abigen. They're not sure what Ooh. they could possibly do. Right now, a defensive EMP comes out onto Dreamfire. North Abigen give up the wall, move a little further forward, and LG on the low ground give Pioneers no room to defend. Well, they defend it quite nicely. Mobile Shield to defend as well. And well, an EMP comes through. Kashera setting their sights, looking for angles, and Dreamfire cannot make the rotation. A shred of HP, and they go down. North Abigen now putting themselves directly under Go Next. Perhaps they can set things up with things like the new castle to be able to take a fight when Go Next inevitably, inevitably have to drop down. But can LG and North Epson avoid fighting each other in the meantime? This is almost exactly the same scenario that Go Next had last game. It is the exact same thing. Managing the jump down for them is going to be costly. When you have two of the same teams, well, how did it work out? LG won the last time, but North Epson wasn't there. Can we see a change of fate here when you've got the battle on the low ground? The mobile shield down. Out, the shotgun's in hand and Funk goes down. The trades come through and Sykes lets the Devo rip, but here comes Go Next. And this time it works out. This time Go Next grab the win. They came so close in game number four, and Castero will not give up on perfect positioning into a perfect finish. This fifth game, fantastic. And absolutely the thing that will secure Go Next. We're already in a great spot. Another spot, another chance in the Elin Bracket. Team Liquid are two points away. It's they and LG who rely on the opposite side of this rock. Team Liquid are so close to pulling off a miracle tip. I mean, it could happen. They are one of the teams that have done this time and time again what is in this game ball? six. Hey, the wall, whatever you've got to do, we expend it early, but it's just a duo from LG, a 3v2 to change your fate here. And the ALGS split two playoffs, Yanya brings in the rolling thunder, Yanya the Newcastle two. wall, but we swing in with the Yanya's Prowler. Got back we up. let it rip, Sykes goes down. It's, it's Liquid Alienware for the win. Team Liquid make it, moving up with the win at the last possible second tip. It's a miracle. They did it, Dia. They did everything that it took. You can see the vibes in that camp. Pastillo celebrating with the boys. I mean, if I'm them, my heart is just, I don't even know. <laughs> I am shaking, Dia. I can't believe, I cannot believe they did it. And it's just the first, the craziest thing about this tip is that it is just the first Step. Team Liquid have been struggling all tournament, and in the last possible second, they make it through, and they've still got games out of them and qualify to Sunday. It is ridiculous that they've made it on in, but they keep flying the banner high. And here's GG now making their move on the low. Off the low ground here, inching closer with the smoke nades to help them out. Blast is forced to back away. They had used that Newcastle wall earlier, and they have the cat wall here too. Just so that way, if they need to block the vision from the left side, they can actually isolate. Maybe C9, who's still by the edge of the zone. As ring six starts closing in, we still have so many other teams going to make it six spots now that not moist is eliminated. C9 in trouble. Saucer, one shot, is able to get into the crevices of the rock. Great job by Gaming Gladiators, clearing up the south. Now Cloud9 in some trouble. GG have the opportunity to charge forward as a massive pileup takes place here on the northern side. You can see VK Gaming giving up that high ground now, dropping down to the low. Cloud9 has been finished off. GG starting to farm up now. NRG getting involved in the fight here as they need to clear out their back and clear out their low ground. And NRG have been on the roof of Lava Siphon from the very beginning. Here comes the Catwall as they make their rotate. Fun loses that on his shield, but Noct gets another knock. Nocturnal is going crazy. 
with 5k feet to his name. Legends Gaming get eliminated. Furia go blasting here, and they're wrapping around, playing from the edge of the circle. Keon took so much damage there, but he's forced to go to between two cat walls. Now it's all to madness here for Furia, but GG with this high ground will be able to get the knock onto Nocturnal. Only one member remaining here for Furia as GG are cleaning up the lobby. And RG get eliminated. Gaming Gladiator take the dub after an insane rotate from Sky West fighting their way, not only from their rotate from Harvester, but right through the Lava Siphon platform to get on the high ground after getting peppered by Bocek arrows constantly. One thing to note, we didn't really get to talk about it at the top of the show, is the priority of the draft. GG ended up taking this one very early on. Up top, we got Furia Moist on the right-hand side, our final three squads. As they drop down and they're going to rejoin together, the circle's going to start closing behind them. But TSM, you look at them and you see confidence right now. Look at the way that they've been able to take these fights, even making a roundabout rotate out of Sky West into Sky East before committing to going from the north side. Fury is still playing above them in our last three squads alongside Not Moist. That's getting handed off. That. Just healed up, got peaked by the Mozam now. EMP down as Furia try to survive this. And they will go ahead and reset back off. Moist now trying to position themselves, but Furia, it's going to be madness to get the first knock onto Verhulst. We see the mother load coming in from Not Moist here. I'm wondering for TSM, it's the trade now as Furia get eliminated. Not Moist up alive and healthy while TSM had suffered a casualty already. Waltzy slides down. The EVA 8 goes blaring. Timmy needs some help. Gil comes in to follow up, and Not Moist are looking to take game number two. Not Moist, we're in a great position during game number one. To, we're not able to clear things out. They clean up their mistakes. They get aggressive on the edges. And they have so much utility as they rotate later in for zone number three, zone number four on this epicenter pull. And it pays off for them. It's great to see that they're carrying this momentum on. Sometimes, you know, you heard Yuki on the desk talk about sometimes if you start off too strong throughout the group stages, you tend to peter out, falter, that's too much energy. Utility is going to be so important when you know that Space Station is the only one with the Watson in an end zone like this. Yeah, SSG have done enough to make sure that these two teams are forced to fight. That's what you want to do here in the final three. Light now dropping down that rolling thunder to buy a little time, buy a little space, at least force them to try and scramble forward, eat some of this damage, but it doesn't look like there's any connects. There it is, the crack onto two members, but they will be able to charge forward now with that shield. The catalyst wall is up as well, and now Game and Gladiators are forced to fight back. Want to play for the win or do you want to play for the KP? They're forced to fight here, playing right behind the cat wall. They find two knocks. Beautiful as Gaming Gladys is just really blast taking a good amount of that damage. And Space Station looking at them from afar. Koifo is walking up for free. SSG now looking to finish things off versus GG. And Koifo gets in space. SSG with excellent control over the train tracks. Go ahead and finish things all off. And it wasn't just the train tracks there. Remember, in the mid game, they had so many teams. Furia, Complexity, so many teams, Vicky, coming in from that southwest side. But they kept, of course, an eye on it the entire time, applied just enough pressure and kept them from coming in there. And I wonder how this solo from Howard is going to impact this one. Walt is going to be able to ult here, which actually might really cause some havoc for the house solo, but TSM are still holding space. They are still keeping NRG center zone here. You can see NRG still haven't been able to heal. They have no shield cells to play with, you would imagine. Guild now starting to burn. That's TSM. Showing great patience in this situation. How have been eliminated, so now it's down to three squads. Moist as the duo, NRG as a three, but weak, and TSM commanding the northern side of this. This is looking like a TSM opportunity to win. But NRG, if they do end up pushing TSM, it opens things up for Not Moist, and they know that, but it's going to be the other way. It's going to be the flip side. NRG, NRG said it to Not Moist. And NRG are playing for second here. They recognize the situation, and they will get second. Not Moist eliminated, but it just opens the door for those three letters, TSM, to call themselves champions. TSM send themselves up to joint second with Gaming Gladiators. And that win will all but secure them in that match point finals. But now they need to start thinking about placing as high as possible. Furia take a lot of damage on the cross at the moment. Shubi up on high, he's got a bow check as well. That's going to make it even more 
Difficult to try and traverse, but every crevice is being played right now. But this Thermite, this Thermite could cook. Furia still have a castle wall, and there you go, you see the leap to try and gain a little bit more ground. And now you're gonna be able to have somewhere to play here, right in the center zone. And then suddenly, Complexity's attention turns a little bit towards Enter Force 36 here. Well, Complexity is just hoping at the moment that Bleed Esports do enough damage for Furia and Enter Force 36 to be forced to fight together. That's gonna to give them placements. That's gonna give them the opportunity to join in a little bit later as well and get those valuable points that they need to be in the top 10 going into game number six. E36 have to make their move, and make their move they do. Catwall goes down, a lot of protection. Now's your chance to move, but we'll see one person fall. And now this is the chance for Bleed to send it, but will they take enough damage to allow maybe Complexity or Fury to do Complexity something? Complexity got eliminated. It's Fury versus Bleed. Complexity got eliminated. Have they done enough to be in the top 10 going into the final game? We'll find out after this. End of point, Force 36 also go down as Bleed Esports now. Trying to deal with Vaxalon. And Shubi might deal with them all himself! Shubi! Shubi! The Red's now coming in! Shubi's gonna hit one more shot, but the gold knockdown is a nuisance! It is a problem! It is a disaster! But now he exchanges resist! And if he can pull this off, it would have been something special indeed, but Furia clutch! Furia, hold on! And even with everything that Shubi tried to do, it's Furia who will stand up and claim game number five. Wow. All hail our Lord and Savior, Newcastle. Welcome to the meta. It has been an incredible tournament for the legend to be reintroduced. We just need to kill the Watson team, uh, then we call. Okay, okay. Can we just angle them? Yeah, yeah angle them. Can I slide and angle them? Bail, 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 bail. Safe for me, safe for me, kind of. Safe After for this me, bagel, safe for me, safe yeah. for me. After this bagel, we have to end them. Okay. Uh, we're dying. I'm sunny out, sunny out! Coming. C9 send it, but C9 takes so much damage from the Rolling Thunder coming in from Na'Vi! And Chaotic left on his own, but still alive. The hopes are slim. But Chaotic still is in this for C9. It's BK Gaming who want to see Cloud9 fall. They hold the 10th position right now as Chaotic much needs to pull off a miracle. One versus the world, it feels like at this point. It's Na'Vi! Even though it's a late surge here, it might just be too late. But that secures VK Gaming, you'd think, in 10th position, but not Moist. They're going to be taking home first place in the overalls. They have dominated this lobby. Can they round it out with a win here? Well, Na'Vi want to round out their day with a victory. They want to show that it's not just one series we'll be talking about, that it's going to be more, but you've got to go through not Moist. And boy, have they been good in this tournament. Na'Vi will win it, though. Na'Vi finish on a high note. But it's not going to be enough. And you can see the reaction from a tough AN crew, even with that win, even with that late game surge. They are just outside of the match point finals lobby, but it's not over yet. It is not dreams over just yet. They will be in the elimination bracket. They just miss out on the top 10 by four points. Legends Gaming just miss out by one point, and you can see their reaction as well. They're gonna have to go through the gauntlet and play another six matches in the elimination bracket round two. Fnatic are the ones that must find the perfect engage onto a Watson setup. Well, hear me out. Sasuki over here, double ult excels, trying to get that EMP online for the final fight. This is where we hope Chaotic does have that Jenny to get it right back up in case all of the fences go down and the timing on this drop to perfection. Look at that, look at that. They're dropping the shield, so when they drop down, they can swap them. Now, C9 do almost capitalize on this. They recognize what's happening and lay a little bit of damage into Yuka, but C9 can't <laughs> actually do anything about these shield swaps. Fnatic are going to need to obscure the line of sight with Bangalore in order to make this drop down safe because they can't close the gap. They can't effectively motherload C9 either. EMP has to come in to break the defensive line of C9 or Fnatic will have no chance. You can already see that it's intercepting right there, the Jenny. And now Fnatic on the low ground using the rock. 
And this smoke, only a few seconds left. Another aggressive smoke Here's left. The Fnatic close the gap. Here's the EMP as Come well. On, We've got Yuka. broken fields on C9, oh. but a broken Yuka traded for Saucer. One for one, and C9 still retain defense. Naughty swings out to the side, getting aggressive on Bangalore with Hemlock Havoc. You've got the chance the to angle. find a one clip. Finds a lot of damage, but he's left chaotic undefended. C9 regroup, and it's a finish from Satsuki. Cloud9 have to swoop in with the Havoc hey, in hand. We return to a meta of old, the double Mozam's answer back, and Naughty, a 25 what? HP Cloud9 win for Cloud9! Can we talk about that? 5 HP, my man Naughty, what was that? What a finish for Cloud9. At the end, it really is just execution. It's like when arenas used to be in Apex, watching a 3v3 happen. But Cloud9's defensive setup is methodical. A moment before the chaos, the final 10 seconds where everyone will be shoved straight towards them. But Kirev from the high ground is just putting the hurt straight onto Navi. And it's actually interesting that one has jumped down and made their oh way God. to mill. Oh but you know God. what Newcastle can do? You can ult a wall straight onto a teammate. We sent one and we joined them. Kinda tries to make it follow up with Matafe, but unfortunately Bangalore just can't do what Newcastle can, and Na'Vi attempting to take the high ground is going to fall next. There's no way around it. Guild are pressuring from one side, finishing <gasps> off another kill. He's it looks get like Matafe will get a res, but how much HP is going to come with that? I've got to say, Tiff, it looks like Na'Vi will be walking away with third place. Gold knockdown comes in just in time, but in the face of a focus from two teams, it is not going to be a Na'Vi second place. They should be going down. Henchman has got nowhere to go, and it's all about the fight between Guild and each other. Those guild know that it's incoming, that nobody really has to worry about Navi anymore, as it's just henchmen in the corner. Wait, wait, look at, we got him climbing all over. He's crawling. He's like, henchmen, help. I need life alert. I've fallen and I can't get back up. This is all okay for that because if Icholo's in guild fight and we come in with a Navi duo, we can still clean it up. But Icholo's, they're oh, already they looking for Navi. They drop and they can't get back up. This is bad. Kurev's stuck on the low ground and having just finished off Navi. It's not a lot of damage. It's a Straight 3v3. Each Cholos versus Guild. Guild have the high ground, and each Cholos have cover on the low ground. A nade messes them up big. Guild start to drop down. They smell blood. It's one for one right now. Guild still with an advantage. Plenty left in the Mozam. We don't have hammer points, but I love the Jenny there. The jump from the top. We've got a gold knockdown to play around. Where's the purple? And this should be it. I think they've done enough, and they do. Guild take map number two. Clinical play from Guild in the end game. Grabbing a win in the second map. This should be enough to push them very far up the leaderboards as they collected plenty of kills along the way as well. It's difficult to win zones from mill. It's difficult to control those buildings. And the fact that Guild and each show those both managed to be the only two teams left at the end is the biggest difference. Six. Squads remain in the final game on Stormpoint. But Fnatic have wrapped up to the north. They want to clean it on out. And I love this. Noctum scan trying to regain. Have one member left trying to get any kind of placement points we can. Team Liquid Alien, where as they've dropped down, they control the roof where Complexity and Dreamfire are surrounding. I'll bet you anything that Noctum's final member is an invisible crypto. It has it's got to be happening. Fnatic are right on top of them. <gasps> and in fact, it no! is Atinum. Invisible in the corner. Fnatic don't know this is happening. The question is, how much will it impact them? Fnatic have a good spot in zone, and Adnum doesn't have that much health. Guild, unfortunately, don't either, as Legacy does go low, dropping down onto the low ground, now positioning across from Fnatic. Yeah, but this could, when you have to move, Noctum will have to move, and they'll be able to grief Fnatic. Noctum are two points away from a top 10 position in Guild. Legacy falls, just goes to follow. MT, the last one standing, and like a Fnatic inheriting more KP. I can't believe how many kills they're picking up right now. Fnatic are having this series of the tournament for themselves. This 
should be enough. Fnatic are playing out of their minds, but Liquid Alienware, who pulled off our Miracle earlier today, may still be able to bring this back. Again, this is the last time that they will play on Storm Point before the finals, should they make it. And Team Liquid start things off with a wall to separate themselves from the rest of the lobby. Oh, the preemptive mobile shield after the oh, EMP, no! but it's a Kraber and Yuka connects. He gets the full two in the chamber and we need more. Incredible to see how quickly Team Liquid's game can change. One bullet left on this Kraber. A nade goes out from Yuka. Woo. Complexity still in this, but Fnatic are farming. Fnatic are unstoppable, and they finish Storm Point with a win. Through the fire, through the flames, Fnatic is out here showing why they were so dominant, not only in LA, but they needed this. A confidence boost, a well-deserved and fought-for win. This has been a transformation of Fnatic in the last 24 hours. EMP on the other side. Liquid are feeling the pressure as Unlucky unleashes with the Nemesis. He is hungry. The rest of Alliance dropped down, although they do have a zip line they can set up quickly. But the other spots fighting in the lot right next to him can see this. They get the next knock on Tayanya. They have to trust their weapons so much here. They're playing that LG position now, grabbing kills, try as other teams go for the climb, but with four left. This is worth it though. He's got to set up the zip line. Another one though drops down. That is knocked him, by the way. Who had dropped down at least one of the members? I'm pretty sure he did that accidentally because look at the rest of Noctum on the high ground. I mean, usually you'd go high and try and clear low, but Alliance flipped the script here. Can they come from the bottom of Thermal to take this game away? Adnum, where were you going? Not the play here that Noctum wanted to go. Now having to forcibly play as a duo, but even better for Exo. Bang ults going down on top of Makers. Oh, getting stuck though originally by the Watson fences now. Due to having to drop down, having to reset, pop this Phoenix kit. The circle slowly approaching right behind him. Here goes the zip line now for our lives to get on the height. But some of the lions couldn't get on the zip line. I don't know if they're gonna make it up. Oh, we have to see here with Exo Clan taking out Makers. A lion swing in. They fully come in onto the high ground and they fully unleash Prowler Net, Nemesis in hand, and the sub ready to go. Alliance. Take game four! A huge game when you were in 16th overall before that dub, and with so much KP. Alliance move up 14 positions. <laughs> They're now in second. They got 27 points. Silly me thinking Alliance wasn't a threat still in this <laughs> lobby, Vicky. They will always find a way. Up to 47 points. They're safe for now, but they still want to push further for the POIs. Yuta leading as the kill leader here too, by the way, as a lucky was able to finish off Brutus. Guild have been very quiet so far this game. Only two kills to their name but they will be playing a part. Here he goes, here he goes, Unlucky unleashes! And he takes care of each other's alliance! Now get eliminated in fourth, we absolutely take those! And now this is free real estate on the high ground for Exo! Shory goes down to Gil, but how amazing was that one by one? Picks them off like a sniper, and then pulls in with the most amps as well. Would have known that the biggest counterpick for Icholos was unlucky, has knocked him now. After the action we saw in the feed with that Kraber from Atnum, they were able to now move in here too. Let's jump into a listen in to see what their next plan is going to be as XR are going to be forced to drop down. They go EMP. We find, they're going to fight, they're going to fight, just wait. Okay, yeah, heal, 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 we're good. Selling. They fight, they fight, they fight, they fight, wait, 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 go, 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 I'm going. One dead, last guy, he's round the other side, round the other side, he's gonna go high on Swinny. Yeah, 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 we win it, I can't see him, I can't see him. Go high, he's go high. No, nice. yeah! Well, the reason they couldn't see him, it was because he was outside in the zone. And XO, they see the other two teams fighting and they celebrate. Can't believe it here, Circle. Start closing in right behind their backs. 
Just a matter of time with Fnatic playing on the edge. C9 still inside this building. Makers on the other side with these Watson fences lined up. Killed, forcing their way in. Final round closing in. And it's with this painting of these Watson fences that are deterring this team from forcing their way. Guild are only one point off, grabbing another spot for themselves. Exo Clan down and out already. The pings, though. Look at the pings. Four squads left. Zicky is looking at the door. He's looking to his back like a chameleon, making sure he's got every angle covered while Fnatic are on the rooftop. Look at this Moby on each side, by the way, with MT also holding that off angle just to ensure that Fnatic don't have a chance. EMP ringing out from their side. Looking for a banger sky nade here from Jesco. Doesn't hit it, neither does the Arc Star. Come on, one more point and they'll move up a slot. Makers also have a chance to push even further past Liquid Alienware. Dream fire. Oh no. MT now is going to be able to find Sasuke. You saw that mother load from the distance. Now C9 come in, slide up and take out Fnatic. The EMP2 having to be careful. What's waiting for them on the other side? Has Makers now moving, feeling confident. It is only up to Zicky. He had tried to swap up his weapon because he had nothing. And Guild will take that for free. Will take another dub to solidify their position and to find themselves in that finals bracket. I said they could move up one spot, Vicky. They've taken the dub and moved into first. Place. Reminiscent of their glorious run through the elimination bracket at EWC. Guild, when their backs are to the wall, are no team to be messed with. 71 points in the series. They stand on top of our 20 teams and wave down to the 10 that we just lost.